So now that we know the different notations and everything for the sequences in the series, let's take a look at finding formulas for sequences. So for this first one here, we have it all labeled out nicely. This is the first term, this is the second term. And what we're doing is two divided by three times one, two divided by three times two, and so on. And so what we want to do here is we want to identify what parts of each of these terms are the same. So what pattern am I recognizing or what, what is staying the same and then what is changing and then try to relate what is changing to some variation of n. So in particular, looking at this, I see in the numerator, it's all two. So that means this is going to be a fraction where in the numerator, it's two. That's never changing in the sequence. And then in the denominator here, we also have three as a coefficient or as part of a product. And so the part that is changing is the number that's multiplying to the three. So we can see it goes from one to two to three to four. And we want to relate this changing number to n in some way. And in fact, this changing number, this one, two, three, four, that changing number is exactly n. So this is just two over three times n. And now for the next one, we have this is n is one, n is two, n is three, and so on. And here we can see what is staying the same and what is changing. So we have two in the numerator again, so that's staying the same no matter what. And we also have two in the denominator and we're adding, that's the operation. And the thing that's changing is this thing that we're adding or the number that we're adding to two. So it goes from one to two to three to four. And in fact, that is, again, the same thing as n. So we're just adding n to two. And now here, there's some notation that I want to talk about. When you see this dot, 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 this dot, dot, dot means that this goes on forever. It goes on to infinity. Where on the first one, there was no dot, dot, dot. This means it stops at six but the other one goes on forever. And now with the series, we can write this notation of the series. So we have the formula is two over three times n, we've already found that. And the only part that we're missing is the number of terms, so the end term index. So if we count here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So this is six in the top there, that's indicating the last term position or how many terms we have. And so this one here, we said that this sequence goes on forever. And we will actually look at infinite series or infinite sequences in the future. However, right now we're going to say that this stops here. So this dot 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 here means you skip a few. And so we're going from, you know, n equals one to n equals two, and then all the way to n equals four, then we skip a few and stop here. So we wanna figure out how many terms we have, or what is the last n value of this term, because it goes n equals one, n equals two, and then you skip a few and you get it to n equals, and we can use the formula, because remember the formula is two over two plus n, so we can use the formula and see, okay, where's the n? Oh, the n is right down here. Oh, that's 12. So the last position or the last term index is 12. And so now that we have a grip on the general notation and finding uh, sequences and series and knowing how to write them out in the different parts of them, we're going to focus mostly on arithmetic and geometric sequences and series because they have a lot of really nice properties. And we've already seen in our class linear and exponential growth, which is essentially the same thing as arithmetic and geometric sequences. So with a arithmetic sequence, looking at this one first, it's a sequence where the difference between the terms is constant. Meaning if you find the difference between five and 11, that's the same as the difference between 11 and 17, which is the same as the difference between 17 and 23 and so on. So this sequence here starts with the first term is five. So this is the a sub one, and then it adds. So the difference here, how much we're adding from one term to the next is six. So we're adding six each time. So this is D, what we call the difference. So we have the starting position or the starting term is five and that's position one. So that's a sub one. And for the next one, we add six. So we're doing five plus six. And the next one we're doing 
11 plus 6, but really that's just 5 plus 6. That's the previous term, and then we're adding 6 to that. And then we add 6 again, so we take the previous term, which is 17, or we could write it as 5 plus 6 plus 6, and we're adding 6 to that. And then we take the previous term, which is 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, and we're adding 6 to that. And we take the previous term, and so this is 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, and we're adding 6 to that. And so we can see a pattern here, and we kind of already did it on the first page, where you see we're starting with 5, and we're adding 6 twice. So when you add 6 twice, you can write that as 5 plus 6 times 2. And the next one, we're adding 6 3 times. So this is 5 plus 6 times 3. And on the next one, we're adding 6 4 times. So this is 5 plus 6 times 4. And then on this one here, this is 5 plus 6 times 5. And so we can write the general formula here as 5 plus 6. That's the part that's staying the same. The 5 is staying the same, and the 6 is staying the same. The thing that's changing is the thing that's multiplying to the 6. And to relate that thing that's multiplying to the 6 to the n, so when n is 3, we're multiplying by 2. When n is 4, multiplying by 3. So the multiplying value is 1 less than the term number. So this is n minus 1, or 1 less than n. So this is the general formula here. In this specific example, we have a sub n is equal to 5 plus 6 times n minus 1. And now for the general for any arithmetic sequence to write that formula, this is the 5, remember, is coming from the first term. So this is a sub 1, and then the 6 is the amount that we're adding. So this is plus that difference d. So remember, d means difference. So that's how much we're adding or subtracting each time. And this is times n minus 1. So to get the equation or the general formula for any arithmetic sequence, this is how we get it. a sub 1, so the first term plus the difference, d times n minus 1, where n is the position number. And when we write these general formulas, just like when we write functions, a sub n is the output, so we leave that as a variable. And n is the input, so we leave that as the variable. And on the geometric sequences, geometric sequences are where the sequence is multiplying or dividing from one term to the next. So we say that the ratio between terms is constant. So if the ratio is constant, what that means is that if you do 12 divided by 4, that's the same as 36 divided by 12, which is the same as 108 divided by 36. So to write that out, that's saying that 12 divided by 4 is equal to, well, that's 3, which is the same as 36 divided by 12. So that means that we have the same multiplying value. So the sequence starts with 4, so that's the a sub 1, and then you multiply by 3. And this 3 is what we call the b. We don't want to call it r for ratio because we've already used r as a rate. And so generally r stands for rate, so we use b like we did with the exponential functions because b will be the base in the formula. So let's do the same thing that we did over here. We start with 4, that's the starting term, and then to get the next term, 12, you multiply it by 3. So take the previous term, which is 4, and multiply it by 3. And then to get the next one, 36, you take the previous term and multiply it by 3. But we're going to take the previous term and write it as 4 times 3, and we multiply that by 3. And then to get 108, you take the previous term, which is 4 times 3 times 3, and you multiply that by 3. And then on the next one, you multiply 108 by 3, and you get 324. And you can write this as 4 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's the previous term. And you multiply that by 3. And on the last one, you multiply 324 by 3, and you get 972. And this is equal to, we can write as 4 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So the previous term, and multiply that by 3. And so now we can generalize this again, starting with the third one here. We have, we're multiplying 4 by 3 twice. So this is 4 times 3 squared. When you're doing multiplication multiple times, that's exponents. And so on the next one, on term 4, position 4, this is starting with 4 times 3 to the third power. On the next one, we're doing 4 times 3 
and you count how many threes you're multiplying by, that's to the fourth power. And on position number six here, this is four times three to the fifth power. So similar to that first page, the parts that are staying the same or staying the consistent is the four and the three. So no matter what, we're going to have four times three. The part that's changing is the exponent. And the exponent in relation to n, where n is the position number, when the position number is three, that exponent was two. When the position number was four, the exponent was three. So this exponent is one less than the position number n, so it's n minus one. So the general formula for this specific sequence is four times three to the n minus one. But we can do this for any geometric sequence where we have to get any term value a sub n you take so the first term is four that's where four comes from it's a sub one so we take a sub one and we multiply it by that three but that three is coming from that ratio and my mistake here we do want to use r as the ratio so whenever working with sequences we'll just use r as the ratio instead of that b for base. So we're going to use r here. So this is r to the n minus 1. And this is how we get the general formula for any geometric sequence. So these are very important. Whenever you're asked to find the general formula for a arithmetic or geometric sequence, these are the formulas that you're going to write in, where you are finding the values for a sub one, so the initial, and you're finding the values for the difference D or for the ratio R. The N and the A sub N are like the inputs and outputs. They stay as variables. So let's work through some examples of using this formula and finding the different term values. So here we're going to first find how to write the general term or the general formula. And then we're going to predict A sub 100, which is the 100th term. And so we first want to describe the pattern in words. So on this first one here, we can see we're going from 8 to 13 to 18 to 23. So that pattern is to add 5. And since we're adding, this is an arithmetic sequence. And because it's an arithmetic sequence, we're going to be using the form or the formula on the left, where it's a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. But before we write out that general formula, Let's write out the different values or fill out the table. So we're adding five each time. So we go from 23 to 28 and we're just adding five. And then we go from 28 to 33 and then from 33 to 38. And so here we have that the a sub one, that is the eight. A sub one is eight. And then the five, that's the D. So five is D a sub one is eight. That's all we need to write the general formula. So we have a sub n is equal to, I'll just write out even the general form. So a sub one plus d times n minus one, where we have a sub one is eight plus d is five times n minus one. So we have a sub n is equal to this. So this is the general formula that we're using here. And so this means that we can get any term value, no matter what position we're looking at, where n is the position and a sub n is the term value. So here when we say a sub 100, the 100 is the n. That's what we're saying n is. So this is 8 plus 5 times 100 minus 1. And so we end up, if we put this in the calculator, we end up getting 503. So 503 is a sub 100. And on the next one here, looking at the sequence, we have 4 to 8 to 16 to 32. And so you can deduct that we are doing multiplication here. So we're multiplying by 2. Let's use the symbol multiply by 2. And this 2 here is what the R is. So R is 2. And since it's multiplication, kind of already gave away by saying R, this is geometric. And so because it's geometric, we're going to be using that general formula on the right, which is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And so let's fill out the rest of the table. So to go from 32 to the next term, so term number 4 to term number 5, we're multiplying by 2. So multiply 32 by 2, and you get 64. Multiply that by 2, and you get 128. Multiply that by 2, and you get 256. 
And so now to write out the general formula, we have a sub n is equal to, we're just filling in the values for a sub one and r. So the a sub one here, the first term is four. So we have a sub one, which is four times r, which is two to the power of n minus one. So this is the general formula. That's all we have to do. And then now we want to find a sub 100. So we're saying 100 is n and we just plug in 100 for n. So we have four times two to the power of 100 minus one. When you punch this in the calculator, you get a very large number, which is 2.535 times 10 to the power of 30. And then on part P here, looking at this pattern, seeing we go from 53 to 46 to 39, we're subtracting seven here. So this is what the D is because this is arithmetic if you're adding or subtracting because subtracting is really just adding with the negative number so it's arithmetic it's the same kind of growth or in this case decay as the arithmetic sequence so where you're working with arithmetic or linear and let's work through the rest of the table so we have from 32 you subtract 7 so you have 25 and then you subtract seven from that. So you have 18, subtract seven from that, and you have 11. And then the a sub n, remember we're using the arithmetic sequence. So this is a sub one plus d times n minus one. And so we have a sub n that stays as the variable. a sub one is the initial term. That's the 53, that's a sub one. And so this is 53 plus d, which the D is negative seven. So let's actually write minus seven times N minus one. So this is the general formula for this sequence. If you wanna get any term value A sub N, you just plug an N into this formula. And so particularly if you wanna get A sub 100, so that's the N and we plug in 100 for N. So we have 53 minus seven times 100 minus one, throw this in the calculator and you get A sub 100 is equal to negative 640. And on the next one here, this one's a little bit different because it is multiplication, but we're multiplying by a negative number. To go from 30 to negative 60, multiply by negative two, because then you go from negative 60 to positive 120. So you're multiplying by negative two. So that's what the R is here is negative two. And so this is geometric because we're multiplying and so to get the rest of the terms, you multiply by negative two. So multiply negative 240 by negative two, you get positive 480. Multiply that by negative two, you get negative 960. Multiply that by negative two, you get 1920. And so we have a sub n is equal to, let's just write out the general formula for the geometric. It's a sub one times r to the n minus one. So we already identified what the r is. So identify what the a sub one, the initial term, that's 30, that's a sub one. So we just have a sub n is equal to a sub one, which is the 30 times negative two. Let's put this one in parentheses because it's a negative number attached to there. And so it's negative two to the power of n minus one. This is the general formula for the sequence. And so to figure out a sub 100, we just plug in 100 for n. So we have a sub 100 is equal to 30 times negative two to the power of 100 minus one. So that's negative two to the power of 99. When you throw this in the calculator, you end up getting a sub 100 is equal to, it's gonna be negative because the exponent will be odd. So that means we have an odd number of those multiples uh, of negative two. And you end up getting 1.9 times 10 to the 31. So a very, very larger, very, very negative number.